Today I am finishing up this current color chart mixing Daniel Smith Potter's Pink into the 10 basic colors. This is another shout out to Christy who told me about this color in a previous video which I'll link to in the description below. I'm excited to see how this color adds granulation to the 10 basic colors. Scan the QR code to make sure you don't miss a weekly update. I share stories from life that relate to creativity. There's always something happening around here. Alright, I'm finishing up this color swatch page with Potter's Pink. This was a suggestion by a viewer named Christy, and I will link the original video that I swatched in the description below where she told me that Lunar Black, which I did last week, and Potter's Pink, which I'm doing this week, can give you some amazing granulation in your paint colors. And you can see the row of Lunar Black from last week has a ton of granulation. So now I've got Potter's Pink on my palette and I'm gonna mix it with the same 10 colors I did last week. But here's what it looks like on its own in the scrap paper. So it's kind of like a, a plum, plummy color. It doesn't look super interesting on its own, but let's see what it does when we mix it with other colors. All right, so here's Potter's Pink with the quinacridone rose. It changes the color slightly. And it's actually a really pretty color and I can already see texture in it. So Christy, thank you again for the suggestion. Because if it continues to do this, like the Lunar Black, then this is another excellent solution if you just want a minimal amount of supplies in your art supply um, stash. Because instead of having all of the colors um, that granulate from Daniel Smith, the genuine colors, you can get this Potter's Pink or the Lunar Black from last week and get all this amazing texture. Okay, so Potter's Pink mixed with Cad Red Medium gives us a bit of an orangey textured tone. It's really beautiful again with all of that granulation. I'm kind of amazed at these colors. I chose through the I chose these colors because I wanted to, you to get like the full range of uh, rainbow. So you can see some, I don't have any really orangey oranges on here, but you can get an idea. All right, so let's see, Cad Yellow Medium with Potter's Pink. Interesting. It's kind of a brownish neutral color. That's good to know if you're working on a landscape and want some texture, but you also want it to be a neutral. The lighter color works really well too for that. Yellow ochre with the Potter's Pink. I'm wondering if I'm gonna get another tan neutral and it pretty much is yeah so it's a little more brown than the cad yellow medium i'd say the cad yellow medium is like a yellow or not a yellow a grayish brown and the yellow ochre makes it closer to a true brown new gamboge with Potter's Pink. I'm guessing it's going to be another brown color. And that's pretty close to the yellow ochre. And that's why I like doing these swatching videos for you guys because now if you don't have either one of those colors but you like the neutrals it made, you can pick which one you like better instead of having both. The, the yellows give you the most variety between the buff titanium, the lunar black, and the potter's pink. You can see you have yellow shades, green shades, and neutral shades. So that's good to know too. Yellow can be very versatile. 
Okay, Potter's Pink mixed with the Viridian is a uh, really pretty gray, actually. I always like having a dark swatch and a light swatch just so I can get an idea of what kind of values I can get with these colors. And I don't push them super far either way. I try to keep it pretty dark, but the lights could go a lot lighter. Okay, this green gold mixed with the potter's pink. And it's kind of an olive brown green color. I don't use that color very often. Like that mix of a color. Potter's Pink is, I'm using more of it than I did of the Lunar Black to mix these colors. So that's also good to know. You'll go through more of the Potter's Pink than you would the Lunar Black because it's not as strong. All right, Cerulean Blue with the Potter's Pink. I keep thinking of Harry Potter. <laughs> Anyone else when I keep saying Potter's pink? <laughs> so, okay, with the cerulean, that is kind of an indigo color. So that's interesting. I like that color a lot. Speaking of Harry Potter, have you read the books or just watched the movies? And have you ever read them aloud? I have read the entire series, all seven books, aloud to my children twice because I read it to my older boys who are teenagers now and I just finished reading the whole series to my daughter and it is quite the task but oh so fun and now I have to decide if my eight-year-old is going to be interested enough in the series for me to read it out loud a third time. So French Ultramarine and the Potter's Pink make a purple color so that's really beautiful. I actually like that purple a lot. Also, final question on Harry Potter. What is your favorite book? Is it the same as the movie? I, my favorite book and movie are the same. And it is The Goblet of Fire. I love that book and I love that movie. I think because it has such a major turning point of the whole series in it. It just changes at the end there. For those of you who've read it, no. Those of you who haven't read it, maybe pick it out of the library. Go take a, take a peek at it. It is excellent. An excellent book. All right. Final color, Paraline Maroon with the Potter's Pink. And it's just, it's like a lighter version of the maroon. But you get a lot of texture in there. More texture in that one, actually, than the Lunar Black. So, also good to know. But, oh my gosh, look at all the texture in those two rows from the Lunar Black and the Potter's Pink. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Christy, for your suggestion. If anyone else has colors that um, they love, I would love to hear about it. Just tell me in the comments, along with your Harry Potter favorites. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining me today. I'm all about helping you grow your own creative practice full of peace, intention, and curious exploration. Find out more when you visit jenfletcherart.com. I'll see you soon.